Hello, awesome students! Today I want to talk to you about PARC. This year, students from all over the country are taking a new type of assessment to see how well they're learning and so teachers can improve their education. This assessment is called PARC. Now PARC is important. Think about it like going to the doctors. Every year many kids go to the doctor for a checkup and to see how much they've grown. Park is the same thing, just for your education. We want to give you a checkup and see how much you grow every year. Park is two assessments. The first part's going to be mid-March, and the second part's going to be toward the end of the year. And oh yeah, something else. Park is totally online. Since Park is online, it can ask better questions in new ways. Let's take a look at some of them. Your screen should look like this. Click on the View English Language part because we're going to take that first. Select your grade and then you want to select Standard Test Nav Version. Once it loads up, I'm going to introduce you to the first key to doing well on PARC. You have to make sure you read the directions. The directions will be located on the bottom here and once you read it, enter your name and hit Start Test Now. You'll see that this is the first session and how many questions are in the session. When you're ready, Hit Start Section. This is Park. It might look a little different than you're used to. Notice the directions are up here, and they'll be over here as well toward the top. Notice that you can scroll the screen, but you also are going to have to scroll the reading passage in the English section, and maybe even the math section. Notice the directions on the top. After I've read them, these are multiple choice questions. I would select the circle next to the letter, which I think the answer is. Up top on the park, you will see that I can click on the notepad button and I can take some notes if I want to. I can also use the answer eliminator. If I think an answer is wrong, I can eliminate some of them before I select my answer. Once I answer my questions, I hit the forward arrow to go to the next question or the back arrow to go back to the previous question. But let's say I don't understand this question. I can hit the flag button and save it for later and I can view all the questions in the section by hitting the review button and that's how I can jump around to review my answers and go question to question. On this question you will see the directions again on the top left and the top right. You'll see that you can click on a word and it will show you the definition and then you might see on the right something you're not used to. The park features a lot of dragging and dropping. Here it's asking you to pick out the conflict and select what came from the conflict. Notice I might not use all of my answers. On this question you see more of the same. On the left we have the scrolling passage I need to read and on the right I have the interactive graphic organizer where I need to drag and drop. On this question, I have to drag and drop highlighted text. But what happens if you drag and drop the wrong one? Hover over and just click the X. On this question, not only should I again read the directions, but I have to read two passages that are separated with tabs. So I can click on one tab, scroll, click on the other tab and scroll, and then I can drag and drop the answers on the right hand side. On this question, you'll see our directions again. But then you'll notice not only are there two tabs, there's actually three tabs. One, two, three. And if you notice, this third tab is actually video. Yep, My the park has video. And you'll the notice the video on, on park works just like YouTube. I can mute, I can adjust the volume, the National Zoo I can pause the video line. if I need to, I can back it up My to the beginning, or I can jump ahead. So don't be afraid to do that to help you answer a question. Finally, on the right-hand side, all I have to do is select the highlighted text that I think best answers the question. But this is a great illustration of why I need to read the directions. Take a look. The directions say I should be selecting one highlighted text per column, but as you saw before, there is nothing to stop me from selecting more than one highlighted text in the same column. If I do that, I would get this answer wrong. So it's important to read the directions make sure that I'm selecting uh, one from each column like the directions tell me to. Next, this is what an essay or a short answer may look like on the park. You can actually type as much as you need to in this box. It will expand to your writing. 
so don't think that you're limited to write in that little space. I can also highlight text by highlighting it and then selecting a color of my choosing. If I need to unhighlight it, I just do the inverse. You'll see that we have cut, copy, paste, undo, and we can make lists as well as bold, italicize, and underline. Those you might be used to from using Google Docs or Word. There's also two types of questions you should look out for. The top of this is a multiple choice, but if you notice, part B is checkboxes. I can select more than one answer. So remember, circles mean one answer, and squares mean more than one answer. And you'll see in this question, you might be asked to pick something from a drop-down menu. When in doubt, don't forget, read the directions. They will tell you exactly what you need to do. If you feel overwhelmed or nervous about PARC, don't be. Just remember to read the directions. Your teachers are here to help, and we're going to do lots of practice. We know that you're going to do great. So, let's get this practice PARC started.